Hey guys, welcome back to another video in my Shishop collection series. In this video, we will learn how to compare two arrays and few basic reference comparison concepts behind it. That's something related to memory allocation. It is a short video, so let's quickly get started. I have here an array, days of week, array 1, containing all the 7 days of the week. Now let me declare another array, days of array 2, with exactly same content. Let's compare these two arrays. What do you think? Is equal variable will contain true or false? Let's print it and see. Let's run the application. Hmm, the result is false. Do you know why? That's because the arrays are reference type. And the way reference type allocates memory is different. Here, our equality syntax is basically just comparing the addresses of the reference variables. Let me explain. So, the memory is basically divided into two areas. That's stack, where the value types are stored. And heap, which is the area where the reference types are stored. Let's say we have a class customer. So, when we do this in our program, that is when we create a reference variable of type customer. What do you think? What happens in the memory? Does it allocate the space for storing name and age? Actually not. It does not allocate memory for name and age. Rather, it just allocates enough space in the stake for storing a variable customer. Something like this. Now when I do this, new customer. .NET allocates all the space required for the data members of customer in heap. Data member in our case are name and age. And since new customer is assigned to our customer variable, so now our code has the variable pointing to this memory block in heap. I hope you have now idea how reference type allocates memory. The reference variable is stored in stack which basically contains the address to the location of the data members stored in the heap. With this, now let's see our arrays. So, we had these two arrays. Since arrays are also reference type, so it allocates the memory in the same way. It will have two addresses in a stack pointing to our reference variable days of week array 1 and days of week array 2. And Corresponding to these addresses, we have the respective values stored in the heap memory. Now when we compare two arrays like this, that's first array equal to equal to second array, what happens is, it basically compares these two references, px009986 and px008005, which is obviously not equal, right? That's why we get the result as false. So the question is, then how should we compare the arrays? If you really want to do it by yourself, then you can do it like this. We first check if the length of both the arrays are equal. And then we compare each item of array 1 and array 2 to check if the sequence of elements is equal. If any element in the sequence is not equal, then we mark is array equal variable to false. Let's run this and check if this program is working. So it gives us the expected result as both arrays are equal. Let's change the spelling of one of the days. Let's run it. Now we get both the arrays are not equal. So our program is working fine. But that's really a lot of code, right? Which will take some effort to write and test as well. 
we would not like to write that always whenever we compare two arrays. Don't worry. .NET has provided an extension method called sequence equal which solves our problem in just one line. Let's do that. Let's write our array 1 dot and then we should get a method sequence equal. It comes under system.link namespace and then pass array 2. That's it. So, what Shishap has done is, for our ease, it has written the similar code that we had written earlier inside the method sequence equal and made our job of comparing errors really easy. Let's run it. So we get the expected result as both the arrays are not equal right now. Let's update the array with correct spelling. Let's run. So we get both the arrays are equal. I hope you understood how does the memory allocation for collection works and how does it impacts our collection comparisons and how exactly we should be doing it. That's all for this video. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe the channel and drop in your feedback comments for all the future videos on C Sharp and other technologies. Thanks.